Hey guys, in this video we'll be doing some number crunching to find out how the damage formula in Heaven Burns Red is being calculated and how you should make use of this knowledge to maximize your team damage. If you are completely new to this game, I would suggest to check out the other video that I just posted to get familiar with some of the terms and concepts that I'll be using in this video. The link to that video will be in the description below. Now, why is dealing high damage so important in this game? Well, besides the obvious, which is killing your enemies, this game has a rotating end game mode called the score attack mode. And as you can see here, one of the scoring criteria is damage bonus. This measures the highest damage that you dealt in a single turn. So it's important to learn how you can pack as much damage as possible in one single skill. This is a high level overview of how the damage calculation looks like. We will go through each component one by one. First things first, let's take a look at our character sheet. There are only really six stats that you need to worry about. Your strength, which is the offensive stats for attackers. Dexterity, the offensive stat for breakers. Your constitution, which is your defensive stat against enemy single target attacks. Your spirit, which is your defensive stat against enemy AoE attacks. Your wisdom, which affects buffing, healing, and debuffing. And finally, your luck, which affects debuffing. These are the stats that we will use in calculating the skill potency, which is the first part of the damage formula. Before we continue, I want to give a shout out to this website, hpr.quest. It's a very useful resource wiki with a ton of information. And we will be using two key data here for our video today. First, we are going to look at enemy information over here. And you can see that there is a lot of numbers and data here. Very useful things such as the enemy skill descriptions and also their attack patterns. What we are interested in is actually this border number right here. This is basically the enemy stat. So while your character has six stats, the enemy only has one for offensive and also for defensive purposes. Next, we'll go to the style list. And when you click on the skill, you'll see a bunch of numbers pop up. What we are interested in is this line right here. HP damage dealt plus 50% and also that their skill scale based on two times strength, one times dexterity. So this is why attackers need strength and they are good at dealing with HP damage. If you go look at the breaker skill, you will see that they scale on one times strength, two times dexterity, and also DP damage dealt plus 30%. Okay, now we are ready to do a deep dive into the skill potency calculation. From the skill description that you get from hdr.quest, you have your skill potency range, your effect parameter cap, which is affected by your character stat and also the enemy's border stat. The destruction rate number here means how good this skill is at building the enemy's brick multiplier when their DP shield is broken. So for blaster skills, typically you will see a much higher number for destruction rate. Next, we'll go through a few examples to illustrate how these numbers interact with each other. So let's say, for example, that my character has 300 strength and 200 dexterity, and the enemy border is 430. So since this skill takes two times strength and one times dex, so you basically add them together and then divide it by three. So the weighted stat will come out at 266 in this case. However, since the enemy border stat is so high, so even if you minus the effect parameter cap away from the stat, it is still higher than the weighted stat that your character has. So in this case, your skill will basically do minimal potency, which is 2502. Now let's say you went and increase your character stat with some equipment and leveling. And as you can see now, that the weighted stat is higher than the enemy border, but still below the border plus effect parameter. So in this case, your skill potency will be somewhere in between this range, depending on how close it is to this number right here. 
Next, let's say that you go fight a weaker enemy instead with only 270 border stat. So now your weighted stat is higher than the effect parameter plus their border stat. So in this case, your attack will do maximum skill potency damage. The same calculation will also apply when the enemy is attacking you, except now it will be based on your constitution stat and your spirit stat. Taking an example of a 430 enemy border, you will need a total of 830 weighted stat in order to take minimum damage. And if your stat is less than 30, then you will take maximum damage. Coming back to this formula here, the HP DP bonus is what I showed earlier, where the attacker does 50% HP damage bonus and breaker does 30 to 50% DP damage bonus. Now, does that mean that you must have an attacker or breaker in your party? Not necessarily, because end of the day, it's just one component in the whole formula. So as long as you make good use of all the other components, your debuffer, your blaster, or even your healer can function as a DPS as long as you stack enough buffs and debuffs. The crit multiplier is the extra damage when your attacks crit. What crit actually does in this game that it actually lowers the enemy's border stat plus an additional skill damage multiplier on top of it. Generally, average, it will come out around 200 to 300% more damage. So this is the probably biggest chunk of additional damage in this formula. And why crit in general is considered the most important buff to have in your party. The break multiplier is what happens after you break the enemy's DP shield. And in this case, a blaster will help you a lot in stacking up the bonus quickly. For gear bonuses, eventually you will unlock 6 star accessories that comes with special effects. For example, this ring here gives extra 10% damage bonus to fire attacks. And this earring right here gives 15% extra damage to HP attack. Next, we will look at elemental weakness. Most of the bosses in this game are weak to a certain element or attack type. You can click and hold on the boss and look at the menu to see exactly how much bonus damage you will deal based on its weakest element. Next up, we'll be looking at Elemental Field. These are passive effects on the battlefield that last a number of turns or sometimes even permanently. During this period, all attacks that are the same element as the field that you created will get a damage bonus increase. This field sometimes can also be used defensively to override the elemental field that the enemy generates so that you take less damage from them. Moving on to buffs. There is too many buffs to list down individually, so the general takeaway here is that for the purposes of damage bonus calculation, Buffs of the same type will add together, while buffs of different type are multiplicative, and each skill can only use up up to two buffs of the same type. In this example, when we check our character's buffs, we can see that the third buff of each type is grayed out. What this means is that this grayed out buff will not apply to the character's next attack, and only apply on the following attack. So this is to encourage characters to get a variety of buffs rather than just stacking the same buff on the character. This also applies to debuffs on the enemy. The grayed out debuff that you see here will not take effect on the enemy. One more thing to note, for buff skills there is also an effect parameter cap that you need to meet. However, this does not take into account the enemy border. So in this example, as long as your buffer's wisdom is more than 232, you will get the full 65% attack bonus. And finally, we have debuffs. The principle is the same as buffs. Generally, you are encouraged to get a variety of debuffs on the enemy rather than stacking the same ones. 
the effectiveness of your debuff will take into account the enemy's border stat. Same like when you are trying to attack the enemy. And this time, you will look at your debuffer's wisdom stat and luck stat. Okay, that brings us to the end of the video. The key takeaway here is that players should try to fit as many of these different elements when trying to build their party. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this video.